The easiest way to write an equation of a line is when you're given the slope and the y-intercept. There you go. Video's done. That's all you need to know. It was that easy. But yeah, there's a lot of different ways that we can write the equation of a line. We can use slope-intercept form. We can use point-slope form. We can use the standard form. But if you look at all these equations, you can see there is a lot of variables. So the thing I love about slope-intercept form is you have m, which represents the slope, and b, which represents the y-intercept. And so in this video, what we're going to do is just focus on that easy way to write the equation of the line. But we'll talk about all those other equations to be able to write a line in another video. But for right now, let's focus on the basics. Because if you're going to be writing the equation of a line, you better know what it represents. So let's Let's go ahead and take a look at this first example where we're given the slope and the y-intercept. Now, again, remember your slope m represents your slope and b represents your y-intercept. Now, again, remember the y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. So sometimes it will be represented as a b, but sometimes it might be representative as y is equal to negative one because that's the value on the y-axis. So if I want to be able to write an equation of a line, given my slope and the y-intercept, all I simply need to do is replace my two thirds for m and my negative one in for the B. So what I'll do is I'll take the equation Y equals a MX plus B, right? And then basically I'm gonna take the two thirds in for M cause that represents the slope and my Y equals negative one, that's gonna represent the B. So I can rewrite this as a Y equals a two thirds X. And then you could write this as a plus a negative one, but that's kind of awkward, right? When you're adding a negative, that's really the same thing as subtracting. So therefore I can give a final equation of a two thirds X minus one. We always like to write the slope times the variable in front of the constant. And you might be asking yourself now, is that it? That's all you need to know? Yes, but stay with me. There are gonna be some tricky examples that I'm about to get to. So let's go and take a look at the next one. Hopefully you kind of get the idea. You're like, all right, well, if this, if I have my slope, right, which is my M, so I'm just gonna replace the negative one in for the M, and then my y-intercept, well, wait a minute. My y-intercept over here was represented as y equals a negative one. Now it's represented as a coordinate point. Like, is that representing the same thing? And yes, it is. Like, you can see that this is a coordinate point on the y-axis. So again, the y-intercept is where the graph is crossing the y-axis. This represents that. So now we just need to understand, well, then what is the value? Like 0, 3 is really the same thing as saying y is equal to 3, right? Because remember, this is a coordinate point. That's an x and a y. So the y-coordinate is equal to 3. And remember, the y-coordinate of the y-intercept is the same thing as your b. So I'm going to plug 3 in for b. So now I can rewrite this equation as y equals a negative 1 times x plus 3. But I think if you have some experience, you recognize we don't really use multiplying by one or negative one a lot. A lot of times we'll just write that as a negative X plus three. So I can write my final equation as a negative X plus three. Okay, so hopefully you're in a kind of a little bit of a groove now and you kind of realize, all right, it's really just simply as plugging in your values, our M and our B. And again, in this example, you can just replace Y equals five with B is equal to five, right? And so you have your Y equals MX plus B and you say, all right, that's Y equals a zero times X plus five. Okay, but now remember anything times zero, right, is going to be zero. So this is just going to give me a Y is equal to five. But I want you to understand something that Y is always equal to five, no matter what the value of X is. So like if I plug in a coordinate point, you know, X equals four or X equals three, like, and I wanted to find the Y value, it's always going to equal five. And I want to show you this graphically because I want you to understand what's happening here when we have a slope that's going to be zero. What we're going to have is what we call a horizontal line, right? That's a little bit different than like the diagonal line that we have, but it's very important to recognize that when you have Y is equal to some value, you still have your Y intercept, right? It has to cross the Y axis, any horizontal line. And that's why you're going to have your Y intercept here in this example at B. And your horizontal line is also going to be zero. But the reason why this understanding is so, so important is because in the next problem is where students will make a lot of mistakes. And that is when we have a undefined slope, but there's a little bit of a tip here. There's a little bit of a trick that's helping us out. And that's this given point here. The X intercept is four comma zero. Now you might say, well, how is that a tip? Because at y equals mx plus b only deals with the y-intercept as well as the slope. And how do I write an undefined slope? Like how do I write something that does not exist? And that's why the previous example is so helpful. We know if we have a horizontal line at y equals five, right? That's gonna be when slope is gonna be equal to zero. How can I have a line that's gonna go through the point four zero? That's gonna be an undefined slope. And hopefully at this point, you understand the relationship with the slope of a line, whereas a horizontal line is gonna have a zero slope and a vertical line is going to have a undefined slope. So you can see in this example, I have a vertical line that goes through the point one, two, three, four, right? So that's crossing at the point four comma zero. Now, if this line, which was my previous example was Y equal five, it makes sense because no matter what X value I have, the Y value is always equal to five. 
So then what do you think a good equation would be if my X value was always equal to four, right? Do you see as I go up and down this line, my X value for any point on that line is always going to equal four. So what's a great way for us to be able to represent a vertical line where X is always going to equal four. And again, you see, I just said it X equals four. So whenever we have an undefined slope, we're not going to be able to put it into Y equals MX plus B form. We can write it though in the form as X is equal to whatever your X intercept. And in this case, it's going to be a four. Hopefully this video helped you understand writing the equation of the line, even though just a little bit of substitution, hopefully wasn't that bad, but now it's going to work on some more difficult problems where we actually now have to expand upon this by using slope intercept form in addition to using our point slope form. I'll talk about that in the next video. And if you just want more examples of writing the equation of the line, or you want to go and take a look at the notes or resources I offer in my courses, then go ahead and check out the playlist and information I have for you below. Cheers.